All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, so you want to write some code today? Like, what do you want to do? Well, I mean, we could write some code. I mean, we're, we had a very stirring discussion and a life-changing revelation in episode one. Uh, so let's write some garbage code now so and I, ruin I, it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of lost our speed there. Um, we spent our time talking about... Here, let me just, yep. There we go. Switch the screen view here. Spend our time talking about agile development and testing, mm -hmm. which had nothing to do with what I had planned to talk about today. Right. You had a plan, though, and that's planning that's a... is essential, even though plans are garbage. Are garbage for trash can people. Right. Um, oh, where? What? What code are we missing at this point? Like. If I run it, what's going to happen? Um, is it going to run, or is it going to look like shit? What's going to happen? It's going to run. It's going to look like shit. Cool, uh, cool. And most functions aren't going to do anything. Uh, one of the things I was going to talk about was cross-site scripting. And I'm sure, here's the thing. Here's the thing, my people. As software developers, and assuming there is a software developer somewhere out in Twitch, run, in Twitch land watching us, you should know better than to put cross-site scripting hacks into your web page. And mm -hmm. you should know better than to put SQL injection vulnerabilities into your web pages because those are the most prevalent security risks in the world this day. Well, and it's, it's super, super easy to avoid both. I mean, they're both in the case of SQL exceptions, you have, or SQL injection, you have to kind of go out of your way to fuck it up. You know? Especially nowadays. It used to be harder to yeah, do. Yeah, but nowadays, I mean, come Nowadays, on. there's really no excuse. Uh, Cross site and, scripting is, it's, it's like, it's slightly harder, but it's not really significantly harder. And it gets, um, uh, all right, so let's let's just demo it up over here, right? Let me let me take this thing. Um, so I already fixed the cross-site scripting bug that we more or less intentionally put in. Well, we put it in and ignored it. <clears throat> uh, was right over here. Um, is this the button I want? Yep, <clears throat> yep, right over here. Mm -hmm. uh, where this line used to be simpler because it followed an easier oops, wrong button. It followed an easier jQuery um, method, right? Where instead of saying, you know, dot text, give me the ter terminal output plus the new output, it just said dot append, right? And right. Uh, a pinned output because that is much cleaner looking and much nicer, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, now, if we... Oh, second thing over here. If you've been keeping up, and you probably haven't, if you have, I commend you. If you've been keeping up, you've been know, know that we've been having trouble figuring out how to get our Heroku local running in such a way that it will um oh damn you guys can't even see what i'm doing right now here switch there we go <clears throat> running in such a way that it will automatically update when we change the web page just the the html or the javascript or the css you sent me a thing on that <clears throat> and it was many weeks ago and i lost it yeah, um, so I I did some work on it, uh, and then mostly I got tired of not getting it right. And what happens when a programmer doesn't know what to do? And he's tired That's of right. doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. He writes a shell Hacks script. around it. <clears throat> Just write a shell script and make a dirty hack. So right now, um, let's see, we can do maven clean compile exec java, which is going to execute the main class in here in place without compiling a war file or building up anything else. And our using Spark Java, um, the main method 
starts up an in-place Jetty server to run our, our Java web app. Usually, this is run through Heroku uh, as a WAR. We compile up a WAR, we toss it at a Heroku node, it launches locally, whatever. Uh, but anyway, we're going to run this in place, but this is still going to run it out of the target directory, target classes, um, which is not the mm -hmm. code we're editing, of course. Uh, so there's still a little bit of a problem there, but to get around it, because I got tired of it, I wrote this shell script over here. On all it does is does an infinite loop that copies the Maven resources into the target directory again, and then sleeps for a second and then does it again, and again, and again, and again. So every second, it refreshes the target directory with the latest resource files, which includes the HTML, the FTLs, sh, or the, the sh.js, all of that stuff, the CSS. It's got a number format exception because it doesn't see the port. Oh, right, you have to, ex in, in your shell, you have to export the port variable before you start right. this. I put it in my I just put it in my bash profile so that it's always there. <clears throat> but uh, normally the Heroku environment provides the port number so that we don't have to look it up. Right. But we've gotta we've gotta be explicit here since we're running without that framework and context. Anyhow, we go over here, localhost, colon five thousand and there's our website. So over in my second terminal here, I'm just going to clear and I'm going to run the copy resources loop. Because I've got processing power, what I don't have is patience. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm going to move that off to the side window on my other monitor over there and it's going to happily copy resources now to the end of time until I hit control C. Right. So I'm going to go to our slash sh slash sh to visit what we've done so far with our terminal so far you can say cow and hit enter and it'll say cow command not found and I say clear clear works right now uh, to demonstrate our dirty hack I could go over into sh.ftl for instance and I can just put in some random text and I can say, Bob's your uncle. Save it. Wait a couple seconds or not even that long. And uh, there it is. Bob's your uncle is on the screen without me having to restart the stupid fucking server. I, I tried to make this, or I told you to, to make this work with the ENTR. Uh, ENTR for, for those who are using Unix-like operating systems. Uh, is uh, sort of like a cheap and shitty file notify thing. Let's you look for files that are changing and react by running a shell script, which seems an awful lot like our problem. It is entirely uh, like it. The only reason I haven't done it for those who don't because know, you're not, not on because, a Unix like OS, <laughs> because I'm running on Windows and I can get close with. Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. Ah, such an awful name. And somebody tried to convince me the other day that it that no, it's called the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm pretty sure that's what it used to be called, and then they renamed it through some kind of partnership with Canonical. But I could be mistaken on that. It's really a fantastically <laughs> awful name. It's like Well, look, all I know for certain yeah. for those that are on the screen stream, I can right click on this on this uh, bash icon on my, you know, on my das taskbar here, and it says bash on Ubuntu on Windows right there for the term. Right that there. might just be what they decided to name this terminal situation. And so maybe bash on Ubuntu on Linux runs on the subsystem, Windows, <laughs> the Linux subsystem for Windows. I don't care. The point is, the point is that, um, they don't have the uh, right 
notification hooks in this Linux subsystem for Windows uh, yet in order for ENTR to work. Right. They are one of the like uh, early access builds of the next version does have it. So it's on its way, but who knows when I'm going to be able to get access to that. Mm -hmm. Either way. Wow, nice. probably. Yeah. My script is happily chugging along over there, eating up process of time. Um, and you can see uh, I've had no effect over here. It's all working just fine. Um, next. <clears throat> One of the reasons I was going to talk, thing I was going to talk about, is cross-site scripting because I feel like it, somebody has to be responsible for spreading the word. And here's the word: <clears throat> over here in our 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 terminal, our fake terminal here, I've added this terminal output dot append, and this append is a jQuery method. So this term terminal output function is a jQuery expression. It returns the results of a jQuery expression right here. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> append will append anything including HTML. Mm -hmm. Like straight up HTML. And here's your example, right? And that means in this box we can put a script tag. Script type equals uh, text JavaScript close that off <clears throat> and then I should be able to let's see can I do this I can put in like what document dot write can't I put that or in there? alert I usually do alert yeah alerts boring though but I'll put an alert in well don't do alert if it's boring alert this is boring <laughs> <laughs> semicolon not always required and then slash script close it off hit enter <clears throat> and I have a typo somewhere. Or either that or I fixed it somewhere else and didn't look at it. <clears throat> right? Let's see. Uh... Hmm. I think we've still avoided our problem. Inadvertently. <laughs> we have accidentally not had the problem. Well, I... I... Oh. Nope. This right here is what I did. <clears throat> this is how I avoided the problem. Oops. I'm only... I'm only... When the command is not found, I'm only outputting the first word of the command, because that's what the shell actually does. <clears throat> mm. Right? So that's also avoiding the problem on accident because I'm not actually outputting the whole thing. So if we put that back and reload, <clears throat> then we can put, uh, this is easier to type, so I'm just going to put a link in, right, as an example. For that me. should not be interpreted to mean that we did not have a cross-site scripting vulnerability there, merely that we're not clever enough to activate it. Oh, no. So, I, I mean, uh, a lot of browsers, like, you don't need white space in most nah. of these tags. Like, I put white space in there, and so it, you know... <clears throat> well, honestly, if you just also, put script, it'll, it'll know you mean JavaScript, because there aren't really other languages, really. Right, and you can do other things, like put in other, um, other white space in there that's not a space character. Mm, uh, yeah. You can put in Unicode characters in there, and you can put in characters that it'll just ignore, but aren't really white space sometimes. Depends on the browser as to what works there. Um, this is reminding me of C trigraphs for some reason, even though they're they're not really on topic here, but they are insane and messed up. So. <clears throat> they might be on topic for that reason. Anyway. Yeah, alright. So, here's a second larger point, though. Is that even when I know there's vulnerabilities in my code because I put them there, I've still accidentally avoided having a cross-site scripting problem 
our bigger mm -hmm. cross-site scripting problem on the site. That's how easy it is to keep from screwing this up. Stop screwing <laughs> it up. Yeah. Stop fucking it up. <clears throat> anyway. It's really a minimal amount of work. I mean, for both, much all security conscious programming. I mean, until you get to the, to like how to design, you know, rights and roles or authorization schemes, most of the workaday security stuff you need to know is, is escape things correctly and don't be overly trustworthy. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Three quarters of it, at least. Indeed. All right. Anyway, I'm. I, I don't want to sit there. Oh, do you remember our favorite security problem? Should we talk about that? Yeah. <clears throat> do you remember uh, a coworker of ours who um, had an issue he fixed by allowing you to execute arbitrary shell commands <laughs> from his Java servlet? Yeah. Oh my God. That's. That's really funny. Um, so he, funny is it? Is that the word? <laughs> yeah. So he, he's actually it, the the work that he has managed to do is totally impressive. Like it, it's really incredible that one guy has done this much work. But the fact that he's an astronomer first really kind of comes through in some of his coding decisions, and. Uh, yeah, so it went for a while, this massive program that he maintained basically as a series of shell scripts, cron jobs, Python programs, and the occasional piece of Java or Perl or C, um, he needed a servlet that he could communicate with from one of those, and so he wrote one that took lines of text and just ran them in the shell and then s sent the output right back. <clears throat> I mean, if you were looking for a way to exploit our our organization, <laughs> then it would have been a golden ticket. You could have done anything with it. But uh, I think you you fixed that for him probably six years ago now, <clears throat> seven years ago, something like that. Long time ago. But yeah. And, and it wasn't even hard because by that time, I think... I don't remember for sure, but I think it had devolved and rusted to the point where he didn't actually even need it, or he only needed a very small portion of it that we could easily do without was, that. I don't know. He was only ever running one command. He changed some of the parameters to it, but he was just running one command. Right. So I think you noticed that, and you made it just run that one command and, and take the parameter and escape it properly and all that. Um, yeah. That reminds me of an even funnier security problem, but we have it still, so I'm not going to elaborate on it in this forum. <laughs> I have a couple of those also. Yeah. I feel well, bad. We'll I feel like if I course. had money to blow, I could get some ridiculous deals where I work right now. Some obscene deals. We should talk about that. No, I, don't, I, I think I'm. I think I'm okay. I think we're gonna keep that under the under the hat. Under but hat. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Ah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Security. And it's always. I don't know. It's it's uncommon. I, I wouldn't say that that. Being security conscious was something that they really emphasized in school, but somehow you just sort of got in the habit by going to school. You just don't see, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe where you're at you see people who got degrees and are still garbage at security, but... One of the biggest flaws is, like you said, trust, is trusting your tools too much. Um, <clears throat> assuming that because you're using some web framework that it just magically takes care of all the possible security problems you might have for you. Uh, yeah. And it's just not, not always the case. You need to be more careful. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so while, while you were away, I don't know if you've seen this, how this uh, shell... Uh, variable and its related functions have shaped up. <clears throat> One thing I did, because I used it a lot, I think we might have done it towards the end of last time, I don't remember, 
So I have a terminal output and a terminal input function defined that returns me the proper jQuery object so I don't have to keep repeating these mm -hmm. lookups uh, or repeating the um, expressions here. Basically, I turned it into a constant. Uh, cool. The second thing I did <clears throat> is I got everything working in a document ready. I don't remember. We probably did that already last time. Uh, I think we did. And I used the shell dot terminal input dot key press. <clears throat> now, one thing I tried uh, first before I did this was I was just calling shell dot read. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Or, or no, this was just like uh, terminal input, like on change shell dot read right here at the bottom. Um, yeah. And then I realized that I, that's a function, and I've already I'm, I'm creating a function to pass a function, right? I'm creating this function on line sixty eight that yeah. just called a function. So instead, I just passed the shell dot read function to Rady directly. <laughs> Right, and that didn't really work for you, did it? Well, it it almost worked, except for the problem of this keyword in Java right here, the word "this." Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> because if you're a Java or not Java JavaScript, sorry, if you're a Java programmer, this as a keyword is refers to uh, you know you're encapsulated in the object we're talking about. In this case, mm -hmm. shell, the variable, right? <clears throat> because the word this occurs inside this shell variable. Let me let me but, take a stab at this, Brian. Um, in JavaScript, this refers to the containing object, but a function is also an object in JavaScript. Almost. So the scope gets all fucked up. <laughs> the scope does get fucked up, but not quite like that. This refers to the context in which you are executing the method, the function. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. In the case of a callback, or you know, I didn't, I didn't pass. Sorry, I didn't. Sorry, where did I go? I didn't pass um, shell dot read to the ready function. Sorry, I passed it to the change function. So I did, um, I basically, you know, did, I, I still had this going on. So command um, dot change <clears throat> shell dot read. Okay. This line here. Yeah. That's what my document dot ready made. So what is the context of this? When you are inside, when you're executing this change callback. Well, it winds up being the read function of shell, right? No. Mm -mm. No? It's, what is it's it? It's the command input box. It's the, oh, DOM, okay. it's the command yeah. DOM element. Right. So scope in JavaScript is widely considered fucked, and uh, that's one of the nice things about newer versions of JavaScript, but, you know, then you need to either accept very limited browser compatibility or you have to use a transpiler, which is a terrible name for a compiler, but something like Babel or um, right. there's a few others, Babel's the big one, will actually kind of fix the scope problems for you <clears> to <throat> some extent. And also there's fat arrow functions, which are, which have slightly different scoping in JavaScript. In, in newer versions of JavaScript. So if it looks like a Lambda, if it mm. looks like a closure, then it, it will never, it, it somehow leaps over the wrong level of scope and gets back to the one that you probably intended. It's, it's all very stupid though. I, it, it's yet another way, like people, people shit on Java all the time. This is another thing that Java just got right. And you don't miss it until it's not there. Right. Um, but scoping in Java is just correct. Just like modules in Java are correct. People dump on uh, Java for having complicated module namespaces and stuff. Try using a language that doesn't have that. 
and you'll grow to miss it <laughs> pretty quick. Uh, yeah. And that's not to say anyway. that some some languages might not do better. I'm not talking Fair about there. C sharp. All right, but yeah. um, you're the one who brought up C sharp, bro. All right. I, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the way I have it written now is because here's the ultimate problem. Uh, when you pass shell.read as a function reference into the change handler, that read function forgets that it came from shell. Right? It's 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 gone. It it has no right. no sense of being belonging to that object. Right, but when you call it like this, it does. When you call it shell dot read, it knows it came from. Yeah, it still has that context. But if I you guess. pass a, a reference to that function to another function that's going to invoke it in the context of some DOM element, then yeah, it's gone. It's toast. Yeah. So anyway, I also added another wrapper around here. Instead of instead of doing a you know imp terminal input change, I did it on key press. Um, mm -hmm. and brought the event and um, specifically look for key 13 which is happens to be the enter key so now yeah. instead of having to like tab out of the field or something in order to affect a change it happens right um, other things I did One more uh, thing. I made sure well hang on yeah. before you go there I just want to highlight this uh, because it looks like a typo if you've used any rational <laughs> right. programming language. Yes. But it turns out that JavaScript has ornate, overly complicated, automagical type change functionality. Right. And uh, triple equals gets you something closer to a double equals in a real programming language. And uh, often is what you mean <laughs> in JavaScript as well. Absolutely. Um, because... It, for instance, if this, if event dot which was a string that happened to contain the number 13, triple equals will fail. Yeah. Double equals mm -hmm. will pass. Yes. Since the object model in JavaScript is so fluid and can change at any point, at any time, on anybody's whim, <laughs> uh, the triple equals is important to maintain your intention yes because even I mean yeah there's no such thing as privacy and there's no private variables in JavaScript there's no the only private variables are in JavaScript are those that are here hidden through obscurity mm -hmm. right I mean, I am free to say, you know, right up here, they pass me event from the system. I can totally say event dot which equals shell, right? I can set it to a whole other sub object. Sure, I, you can do whatever you 10. want. I, whatever, you know. Ah, yeah. Which would convert it to probably ten, right? Because it'll it'll get automatically converted to true, which will get converted to one. I don't know. You should try it in the browser. It'll be horrifying. There's a video called Wat that talks about <laughs> Wat. the behavior <laughs> the behavior of these things in JavaScript and Ruby. It's pretty funny. It's it's worth a watch actually. Triple equals. That's important. All right. That's important. SHFTL. What oh. else did we do? I put on submit return false. Just like if you submit the form, just don't even do anything. Mm -hmm. Ignore it. Right. Right. Get rid of this pop up. Important. Uh, so, anyway, I think we're pretty well in here, in it to win it. All we've done is talk. We haven't accomplished a damn thing, but I don't know. We had some good topics, I guess. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I had a good time. I don't. I don't know about the rest of you. Right. Um, and I, I actually had one more point I wanted to make about JavaScript. So, if, if you look at Java and you ask yourself, "Why did this happen?" The answer is usually engineering. Right. The answer is for consistency because there's going to be a hundred people on your team, and most of them are going to be dumb. 
And, you know, that's why. The reason why things happen the way they happen in JavaScript is to impress your 15-year-old girlfriend. Right? Because you're on your GeoCities page. Right? <laughs> and you're adding a banner. So the reason why JavaScript is shit is because Jamie Zawinski wanted to help you get laid. Right? That's why JavaScript is bad. Fundamentally, right? Indeed. Anyway, it's gotten a lot better since ECMAScript 2015. But I think that has more to do with the fact that people realized that people were trying to do work. <laughs> isn't really just about getting laid anymore. So, anyway, last point. That's all I have to add. So, all right. Well, go. we've been on for more than an hour. Um, what do you want to? Is it is past your bedtime? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I I tried to message you that on your on your little chat room. So that um, I wouldn't have to say it in the actual episode. <laughs> but yeah, I probably should go. I see that now. It didn't beep at me though. There was no. There was no beep um, telling me all about that. Bummer. Next time I'll I'll just beep. I'll be like beep, and you'll go, oh shit! <laughs> time to wrap it up. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to kill my show loop. Cool. My update loop. All right, everybody. Well, as you can see, we did not write a single, not a one, new line of code. But we talked about a lot of things. As promised, as promised on the front page of the website. You got, you got talked to. You got talked to. Um, look. We celebrated our lines of code. That's right. That's right. We, Look, we have we even more them. strong, unsubstantiated opinions about software than anything <laughs> else. So please allow us to entertain you with our banter. So we've, we've, I think this episode has stood up with the strong, unsubstantiated opinions. Maybe even a couple, couple substantiated opinions. Maybe. All Thank right. You. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to cut it off. And I'll see you next Saturday, hopefully. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see.